Okay. Well, good evening and welcome to the Thursday, March 4th, 2021 Afton School Committee budget meeting. And we'll begin our meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have any adjustments to our agenda tonight, Mr. Ross? We do not. If it was okay with the chair, before we get into our strive statements, I'd like to give a brief update of what I do know about um, going to the ballot on our on this particular budget this year okay that's um, a great idea. i spoke with jen rue there was some conversations at the selectman meeting as well i spoke with jen early this morning and um it seems as though we may have an opportunity to do the ballot for this particular school budget if if that's the way we want to go we'll work with the selectman if that's their wishes as well and my question was if we do the ballot for just the school does it need to be all, I'm going to guess that when we're done, that there might be 19 articles? And the, the answer to that question is if they come and vote on just the school by ballot, they have to answer each of those, say, 19 articles, as you're going to vote next week on the 19 articles. The answer is no. no. It can be one article, the total amount, up or down. Then there's a however. And I don't, we're not doing this this year, but if we say we did have a reserve fund for paving like we did last year, that would be a separate article. Yeah. But the general operating budget, so what I did is I asked for this in writing because that becomes the warrant. So tomorrow I'm going to spend some time working with Drummond and Woodson to have the language, what, the, what would that language look like? Because Tim, Kim will have certain amount of turnaround time to plug the numbers in, but they could write the actual warrant and it would be one or maybe two questions on the ballot for the school budget for FY22. That's the most current information I have as of this afternoon. Whether we're going to have a a ballot vote on a Tuesday in this town that's to be seen and I think that's an opportunity for us I would encourage us if we can do that that we do do that absolutely um, and it will be less questions than more questions would be very efficient and very effective so that's kind of where we are with the end of the process which is getting it approved by the town okay if, if we were if we if we didn't go that route <clears throat> we I, I um, listened to the selectman to me last night and Dave can correct me if I'm wrong but if we didn't go that route, then we would be a part of the annual town meeting, which is going to be now on June 19th, I believe, and it's going to be at the fairground. So <clears throat> and that Has would that be, been settled? Pardon me? I hadn't heard that that was official, is it? It's not official okay. yet. That's what we're aiming for. Okay. We, would, we would really like to do it the following Saturday. Unfortunately, the fairgrounds has already been taken. Mm -hmm. um, we would really like to go to an open town meeting if possible because we have some zoning and there's questions there and we really think that you know it's it's good that when you have zoning especially zoning because it, it, it can affect you in different ways and down the road um that it should be something that you should be able to speak on it's kind of hard to do that at the ballot box yeah. if it wasn't for that i think we probably would be doing it on the ballot also um but as of right now um jen is working on it we're hoping to get everything lined up and, and do that then obviously if, if you had to be part of that you could be obviously so. right. that'd be great yeah yeah the, the advantage to us going earlier of course would be in being able to plan ahead for next year what we're going to need first uh being able to start hiring sooner if we yeah, don't have totally. to get our budget passed until sometime in mid-june then you. the hiring process gets to be really sticky because a lot of the candidates that are, that would be you know good candidates have already been hired someplace else so the biggest advantage for us would particularly be in the hiring field and in knowing exactly what we have going forth um, into the unknown of 2021-22 <laughs> but you're going to be having the same um the selectman running road commission or school committee on that Tuesday, right? On the eighth, to be on the Tuesday. Yes. Your, regu yeah, your regular so election. Be anyways. So that's we could, a state election. That usually, that was, yeah, that's a. I know. Yeah. All right, but what I'm saying, the school things could be on that day, and if you people want to have your town meeting on that following Saturday, that would be okay too. That's we're, my opinion. We're, we're, I, we're probably talking closer to April or May, though. Early May. We're talking about having our 
own our, meeting our, our, budget, own, our uh, own budget meeting like we usually yeah. have only instead of having it in person in the gym like we usually do it would be uh, it would be a ballot and you're mm -hmm. looking at the end of April, 1st of May area? Pro probably. Yeah. Jen mentioned there needed to be 45 days from the That's time right. the selectman signed the warrant, and she knows all the rules yeah. on the municipal side. Yeah. And she said after tonight, when I talk with her tomorrow, when I know better what the warrant might look like, yeah. uh, which I now have a much better idea, that she could give me some Tuesdays that work for her. So it would be, you know, it would be definitely before the June 19th date. Yeah. And what that allows us, as Judy stated very clearly and it's correct is it gets us a chance to get out front for hiring but one thing we've got to remember is this summer is going to be our biggest summer school probably ever because there's so much remediation that has to happen mm -hmm. and I might be looking at um, needing to fund some tutors for certain kids and some other things so that when we open fully in this fall for everybody hopefully there isn't a lot of learning loss we've been doing great here keeping on pace but it's not like it is if they're in school every day and we're going to have to really grab that summertime and the sooner I can get planning that and have the funds to get that going as of July 1 when we turn the page and do a new physical year, the, the better we are. And that's part, part of why I've always liked that April vote versus the June vote. So that would be good if we could still do it at the ballot box. Sure. I think that's going to be the only way that's, we're going to be able to right. do it. That's it's the, the only way, way we, that's we can do it. That's the way we're going to get, yeah. right. gonna get a good yeah, feel no. of the town. Of so the, the town. whole thing is Article 2 through 12 are like all the numbers, right? Operations. But then you got the 13 wordy yeah. one, the 14 wordy the, one. The, 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 the state, yes. So it'll probably be at least So like the big question, why are we right? So what I did is I, 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 call, I called a few different towns our size, and of course, they're in northern Maine, so they actually had people in their gyms last spring. They're not in York County, and they weren't red, and they weren't closed. They were, the schools were in hybrid or closed, but their towns were still sort of operational. Like, we, we weren't meeting in the town all till when, like September? This place was pretty much locked up until July, and then we let kids and staff back in for the I summer. Believe Sanford's still doing remote. Yeah, so it was amazing All to talk to the Northern town, Maine. The town councils and stuff like that. Yeah, still they're still not live, right? No, no. Back, back Northern Maine, Aroostook <coughs> County, Penobscot <coughs> County last spring, you know, they'll have 25 people show up for a, for a school vote. We get 187 in our gym. We can't put 187 people in our gym under the current governor's order. So, um, you know, I talked to a few schools, and they're like, yeah, we were able to pull it off, but I can see why you couldn't. So. Ballot's going to be our only way to get it done before the June meeting that the selectmen will arrange. And to be honest with you, I think that's great. Last year's ballot worked out perfectly. Over, I think over 400 people voted. That's right. right. Yeah. It, it was a really an eye opener for yeah. us, you know, because you know it's nice to be able to get up and argue your point and this and that. But when you the problem we've been having with our town meetings is, you know, you'd be lucky you get 50 people. If you get 60 people, it's like woohoo, you know. And, and at the end of the day, when 60 people vote on, on a you know um, $3 million budget, mm -hmm. um, well, le less than that, obviously, a little bit. But um, it, it's, it's a lot nicer to see that 400 people have actually made a say on what our budget is. It's easier to roll forward like that. Mm -hmm. So, and, and the turnouts that we got were pretty good. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we would still, <clears throat> we would still, you know, we'll still have our budget book that will be going forward, that we'll have everything total transparent in it and we also uh, would have a public hearing of some yeah. sort. You have to, yeah. It could be Zoom, yeah. Zoom public hearing. Well, I, you know, why couldn't we do whatever? We're allowed 50 in the gym. Mm -hmm. So why couldn't you have the first 50 people who sign up can physically be there for the, you know, that public hearing and the rest can Zoom in? You, you, can't. you know, can we do that? So there's people who are really like the face-to-face -face can come. The only problem we found is we were talking about doing the same thing. Yeah. We were going to see if we can have our town meeting here. So you let the 50 people in, and we talked about maybe setting up some classrooms yeah. Yeah. and have them zoom in yeah. and, and vote. And it would, the te you know, technology, you know, the, it would be a real undertaking to be able to make it so that everybody, because you, you, you can't deny somebody right. the voice. Right, right. So, right, yeah. you know, the 51st person who walked to that door and says, well, you're not allowing me to do what they're right. doing, then it becomes a real issue. So that's why what we're trying to do is by doing it outside, uh, you know, and we got some cover down there, we can get 100 people. Yeah. And we'd be less likely to have to worry about somebody's civil rights, you know, somebody's rights. 
So and it's still a hundred outside, isn't it? Yeah. It's is it still like but to June maybe that'll change. But right well, now, right, right now we're banking on a hundred right now. You bet. Because yeah. we don't know what you know one minute you know it right. change. So right. we, we we really gotta be on the caution side of caution. So that that's the only problem with that whole theory is now Judy when you were talking about the um, being transparent and getting stuff out. What we did last year we we sent out mailings. Mm -hmm. We sent out trying to get to everybody because that was the first time that we'd ever done uh, a ballot like that. We wanted to make sure that you know everybody was, and I think that's probably one reason why we got so much participation because more people knew about it. You also hosted two Zoom hearings on the budget because I was at those. Yep. And some questions about the school came up, yep. and I fielded them. And there was a way of kind of getting Q and A done yep. before the ballot box, and that was well done via Zoom. So yeah, twice. Yep. I mean, yeah. They were long. <laughs> they, were, <laughs> they were very long. The school piece was pretty short, but the rest of it <laughs> got to look like it. Yeah, that just went right out. You're at the beginning of it, the rest of it was like, oh, you know. But, uh, but that's, that's what we did last year. You know, we sent some stuff out that way there. Everybody was on the same page, and we didn't have to worry about anybody being excluded. It would probably be to the town's advantage as well if we had our uh, budget early, if we do a, a, a referendum early, because if the limit is still 100 outside at that right. time, school if you combine the school budget with the town budget, you're definitely going to have a much bigger crowd. Well, that's so. what one of our concerns was, was if we had down here and we combined everybody. You would be over. Yeah, you because know, if it was just a regular town meeting, I'd probably bank the farm that we're probably not going to you know, hit the limit. You know, but with adding the school in, there's no doubt it was going to go over. Right. Um. Okay, so okay. good update. Thank you, Dave, for being here. That was actually excellent timing for you to be here tonight because you just talked about this last night. Yeah. More to come. Obviously, I need that yeah. legal opinion, and yeah. I'll update you as soon as I have something that's rock solid, and I'll be working close with Kim and Drummond Woodson because Kim's numbers that you vote on next week need to be exactly put into whatever the language is for that one big warrant versus each article. Well, so. when we vote next week, yeah, you're voting on the articles. We're going to yeah. vote, you vote on the articles. You, just you're like gonna, you normally just do. Nothing will look different next week for you, right? It's just how we present it to the pop, to, the, to the community will probably look different. Okay. Yeah. Maybe at our at our regular meeting next week, we can we can uh, brainstorm some other ways of making sure that the you know all the public gets the information that we, we want them to get from our budget. Um, Everybody doesn't necessarily get the budget book. We put them in good places for people to pick up, but that doesn't always happen. So, Dave was talking about. So we didn't mail, mail out. out. We <coughs> might think about. We didn't that. mail we out the budget book. <coughs> no, we didn't mail it last. Week. We didn't we, mail. We did. We had. We had it all on an email thing. So the town had it on email. We had it on email on our websites. We did print out a bunch. So and. And in fact, you took some something. Yeah, I deliver them to all the places. Right. Right. We put them in the post office, the Milton Mills post office, because some people in Acton get their mail over there. We put them at the t town trading hall. post, at the town hall. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we can, well, well we have, open at locals not open right now. We have our, for us, to speak only for the school, <laughs> school based population of the community, we have text, email, and voicemail. Okay. So every time it's get out to vote, that's what I use, and it seems to really pay, pays big dividends. Yeah, but on you people. do a link to our yeah. We book. say we our say booklet. we say go to our website. Please oh. remember that on Tuesday, the whatever of April okay. or May, we'll be having a vote from eight to four to town hall. Please see this link for any further information, or give me a call. I'll walk through any of it with you. Something very close to what I just said will go out, mm -hmm. probably like three times. Mm -hmm. And okay. we've even asked the PTG before to do a bunch of marketing for us, and yeah. it's it's mm -hmm. paid off. I mean, it used to, uh, from what I've heard, 25, 30 people would show up to vote in the school. Last three years, you've been almost 200 people, if you go back and you really think about it. Mm -hmm. Now, there were other items. Yeah, there was some fire department things and some other yeah, things, but when you call out those, it's mostly parents that are here and we're offering right. babysitting and everything else. So that really has changed if you think about the last few years versus mm -hmm. the long term. I wouldn't bank on trying to get 50 people. We'll get close to 200 people if we could put them in the gym, but we're not allowed to. So it'd be interesting to see how many will go up to the town and vote on their own versus come here as a group as a young parent. They will. I think they will. I really think they, I think they will. It's yeah. easier than sitting in a chair. Yeah. I, I think the difference listening. last year is you had the town combined into it so, yeah yeah um so you're gonna get more volume because of that right but you know i, I there's a lot yeah, yeah but i i think you you want to get 
it's a mail ins out for the people who there's a lot of people who don't do social media, don't right. do email. That's a lot right. of the older you know, older residents that don't know that stuff. So that's why we felt that if we mailed it out there and landed it in a mailbox that's exactly right. and there was nothing there to say, hey, you know, I was discluded because I don't do email and I don't have that stuff. So um, well, we no longer have the smart shopper, right? Yeah, that's right. gone. We can't yeah. put it in there. Well, at least everyone got that in their <coughs> mailbox. <coughs> and and I, I really it. don't think at the end of the day that any, you know, we were, you know, because it, it's it's a cost and it's work to it of getting it out there and this yeah. and that. But in this day and age right now with the COVID situation and everything else and everything's being switched around that uh, we, we had no complaints. We had people call, where's mine? Where's mine? Where's mine? And it, it was coming, you know. And, um, but everything was pretty positive and and the way we did it you were able to go down through and read every article and absorb it the difference between that and town meeting is a lot of people will walk into town meeting grab their heart to grab the warrant br breeze through it and then vote where when you really sit at your kitchen table and you're looking at it you can actually <laughs> absorb the information and actually get something out of it so you know, I think that's a big plus. Um, I don't if that's something we don't want to do every year. I don't think it's something we want to do every year. You know, because you know, there's a lot of work into it. But um, just a suggestion. Expense. Very good. Okay. All right. So are we ready Excellent. to get on with our business now? Sounds good. Okay. I will start with opening our meeting with our six drive statements, just to remind everyone how we do our work. Um, we will strive to work together as a community that values the education our children receive at AES. We'll strive to be fully present at the meetings by becoming familiar with the materials and by being attentive. We'll strive to invite and welcome the contributions of every member and listen to each other. We'll strive to be involved to our individual level of comfort. Each of us is responsible for airing disagreements during the meeting rather than carrying those disagreements outside the meeting. We'll strive to operate in a collegial and friendly atmosphere and we'll strive to be responsible for examining all points of view. Uh, tonight we're going to be looking at, on the agenda, we're going to be looking at special education, Article 3, Article 9, Transportation, Nutrition, and then we're going to finish with revenues. So Article 3 is where we'll start. Sharon Cray is here with us tonight. If we have any specific questions about any of the line items, and as in past budget meetings, we kind of work the document from the left to the right. And really where I'm focusing is on what we have for FY22 proposed versus what we currently have and what that difference is. It's either up, down, or flat. And flat means no change. And notations is to your right, which gives you some, some um, information. Generally, the ones that have the higher percentages, I, I try to give a little more explanation to than those that are just even or a lower percentage. But we start with salaries to professionals, which is the entire special ed team. Um, we're looking at a, um, a difference of 2.25% or just under $3,000. Salaries to instructional aides, uh, there's a difference there. Um, wages for educational technicians, um, 21, 135 or about 9%. Yeah, because we're adding. Position. So I figured, yeah, that's right there was what an ed tech position, yeah. <laughs> Salaries to administrators, we're looking at flat. After school tutoring is flat, no change. Salaries to substitutes, no change. Employee benefits for professionals um, is down almost 10%. Employee benefits for instructional aides is, is way down, um, almost 30%, uh, almost 40%, and that must be changing where the personnel are and the benefits that we're paying. Yeah. <laughs> Employee to tutors is flat. Employees to benefits is just under 10% at 9% up. Group health is down a little bit, 1.75%. Group health insurance for instructional aides is up a little bit, 4%. Social Security is flat, no change. Retirement contributions is 2% or $124. Retirement contributions for instructional aides, $145. Retirement contribution for administrators is uh, for me that's a new thing this year. You made some changes because of your retirement. It's no, no, no. Know. It's required now. The State Department of Ed is requiring ah. people who are retired return to work, which is me. That's you. Um, they are forcing uh, us to make a contribution back into to the retirement. Back so into the retirement. Perfect, and that's new. Where that's before. new. Yes. Very good. Thank you for that explanation. 
Well worth the cost of getting a veteran back into the game. Well worth the cost, my friend. Um, professional employee training and development services is down 1300 or we down. We just moved that up there. So yeah. Because I haven't been using that. Okay. Yeah. So we just shifted it. Okay. Special education contracted services. There's a chunk there. You want to give that an Yeah, so what we did is we just moved that money over to, uh, if you look at the next page, yep. you'll see that we, we increased funds over here uh, for the transportation, uh, for the uh, tuition to schools paid uh, within the state, and we moved some money over to, uh, to uh, what was the other one? No. Taking it out of the grant. Right. Taking it out of the we're grant. Taking, that's the difference. Yeah. We're taking it out of the grant. So we're yeah. taking the psychologist and, yeah. the, and the speech and we're moving that over to the grant. And we also moved some of this money into tuition. Right. So if you look at the tuition to uh, uh, pu public and private schools, we've gone up in those areas as right. well on the second page. All right. So the majority of it got moved to the grant, some exactly. of it got shifted over yep. because that yep. you spent from the grant. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Legal services, no change. Now I'm going to turn the page. We're going to get right to where Sharon was talking about, which is the top. Um, you're going to look at student, private, private. Um, so let me just kind of specify what this is. This is transportation for students who don't go to school here. They need to go to out of district placements because we can't meet their needs. Their needs are such that they need to go to a special school. That's always been a relatively high cost because you have to transport one student, you might have to transport five students. Mm -hmm. And I do know that with the federal money that we use to get some of the vans to help move kids, that's where you're seeing some of your savings because our cost in the future will only be for a driver and the maintenance of the van, not the cost of the driver and the per mile cost of a contracting paying for now. Right. And that's got a life cycle of at least five years looking at a seven year rotation. Um, tuition paid to school units within the state, there was the increase that you spoke to. No, no, it's not the increase, it's the same. It's no change, no. right? Well. Yeah. Right, 35, 35. I'm not looking at any change there. Uh, tuition to private schools is up for almost $5,000, 2.5%. Traveling conferences, no change. Instructional supplies, no change. Equipment and furniture, no change. No change for the last four, ending with book and fees. So that whole cost center, as we do, we look at the overall. You take all your line items, you look at this year compared to next year, we're actually down $62,000 at the end of this particular so special education. Next year is, protect, is projected to cost us $62,000 less than it is in our current And that's era. primarily because of the transportation. Because of the transportation savings. Okay. So, no. also because of moving stuff to the grants? Because, no, so, <coughs> again, when we do it, we base it on the student population we have as of today. Okay, so compared to where we might have students last year, we they're not all at the same place. Okay. So it's always going to, you know, like we, we move some students from one type of out of district to a different out of district. So there's sometimes it's just a cost shift, the shift, or somebody moves out. So when I when when Sharon and I did this budget was based on the student population we have right now, and. Um, so what Knowing you're seeing that is what we actually think, like what it was going to be for the students we have going to the places that we figure they're going. And so the bulk of this, you know, like the 35, the reason why you see 35 in that one is because that's a public school versus a private school. So certain programs at Sanford, uh, the Bridges program and stuff, that's, that's, it's a different category as far as the state's concerned. So yeah, you do see that 35. That is because we shifted it to a public out of district instead of a private out of district. And the state's being very, they want specific codes for specific types of out of district tuition. So that's kind of why you see that shift. It's just because of the students we have and how they want it tagged with the, the specific codes. Um, but the biggest savings in here is due to out of district uh, transportation. We use the grant this year half and half, half of it for contracted services for site, and the other half is for transportation. So next year, we figure most of it, all of, all of the grant will go to contracted people, so speech, OT, psych, and our transportation will be internal. 
we'll be using our own bands for the bulk of it. So that's kind of mm -hmm. the way that we budgeted. So that's why you're seeing that, that difference down. We, we, we had the budget for the grant last year within the budget. We have it in here with this budget as well. It's just that it's shifted into different groups, that's all. Okay. okay. Cool. Good thorough explanation. Thank you, Kim and Karen. We'll move on. Anybody got any questions? No, no. Hold on. Oh, we do. Okay, sorry. Move so, wages for a special ed tax. You said something that we added some tax? No. Nope. We've got in the budget to add one ed tech, and that's because we anticipate that we want to, that we will be bringing in a student from out of district back to the district. Well, so this, right now, this year, say we have nine, now we're right, going right to have ten. Right now we have nine, yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. Any other questions for special ed? Mm. No, but shouldn't that column with the 35,000, second page, second line, you didn't put any percent there. The zero, the zero. Well, you see the zero here that's um, under the fiscal year 2021 and how it says zero? Yeah. That's because I don't believe we budgeted for it and we shifted funds into this year's fiscal, right. fiscal year. So when we initially passed the budget last year, there was nothing in that line because we didn't anticipate that we would have to pay anything out of that line because the state did not have that particular funding code right, available right. to us. Yeah. So after Kim was told, you need to use this funding code, we had to take some money from the um, the um, 140 above, the student, not transportation, the one below, the, the uh, 630, right yeah. below. We yeah. had to move right. that. And so that's why it reads zero there. So that's why there's a zero, there's no change because if there's actually a 100% change, really. I know, that's what I mean. Yeah. I think right. she put a 100% there. Right. I don't know why I think she put It's just blank. But that makes, that, that my explanation is right, Kim. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a new cost center, new cost yeah, code. New that cost next, code. You have nothing to compare it to, so that's why it, it's probably blank. It didn't exist before, so now it's a placeholder. Okay. Next year, you'll be able to compare it. Right. Like it's in next year. Right. Yeah. Because this is a newer program that the school at Sanford has put in place. Right. right. Which which is a public right, which is a public school yes. like uh special, a district place. Place. special, yeah. special placement. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's yeah. off site, it's in a different yeah. location than the mm -hmm. high school. Yeah. yeah, but run through the Sanford School. Right, right. exactly. Yeah. yeah, got it. Yeah. That's what I missed. We didn't meet with the Sanford um, school committee this year. They're still meeting on June. I mean we haven't met with them. For a long time, I know. we used to try to get twice a year, but we're lucky to get once, and yeah. we haven't seen them in forever now. Because oh. I remember the lady from the Bridges program was there. That's right, I remember mm -hmm. that. That was before last year. Yeah, yeah that was they're expanding the Bridge program too to right. include the middle right. and right. elementary school yeah. next oh, and they? elementary students next year. Yeah, yeah. Really? which I think is awesome because you know um, it. We, we would probably access them much quicker than we would access, you know, a, a very expensive private special purpose school mm -hmm. that's in Saco or Kittery or New Hampshire before right. we, you know, we would use that as a kind of an in-between placement. So. so I'm excited about that. You know, you're talking about uh, the, the smart shopper disappeared, but there's that other free paper out the reporter. The reporter. Oh, and those are everywhere, and they disappear. I forget, they're in Shapley, Newfield, Athens. You ever pick them up at the trip? They're everywhere. And they do, once in a while, do have something in there about Acton. And then I see Shapley advertising their, um, what, their voting and, who, and this and that, Newfield. But very <coughs> hardly anything about Acton. You but I'm sure you need. There. But I'm sure you need a reporter or something from Acton to do that. Probably send anything in. We could probably send no, anything in. Probably right, get an we'll do ad. that. Right, yeah. but I mean, they disappear. I mean, the, they just go. People go in and look at that because it's for six it's towns, I think. It's free. That's it. why we That's it. it. Free. It's like the Observer we used to have. That's yes. right. Yeah. Well, that's what it's like. You you must uh -huh. have seen it. You seen it? Yeah. It's always at the town hall. So that's a good. Well, I don't go to town hall. 
and I did all the time. <laughs> no, but just I'm saying that that might be <laughs> some way to advertise different things. You know. Anyway. All right. If we're all set with special education, transportation. Let's move on to Article Nine. Yes. Thank you very much, Sharon. Really appreciate it. Yeah. We're, so transportation is Article Nine, and there's only a few items on there, and we are in our. This budget, starting July 1, will be our last contracted year with our new transportation company. Wow. So this is really the year for contracts, too, next year. We mentioned that in one of our line items last time we met. So you got the collective bargaining, we've got special ed, we've got administrators, we've got a lot of different entities, one of them being transportation. So we're locked in with the 1.3% with the increase, which is the lion's share of this budget. The other two, auto insurance and fleet fuel, are attached to the new vans that we got. But so that's where that those are items we had to put in because that's what we're that's what we're going to have to you know yeah. put the bill for. Yeah. Okay. But in the long run, you're going to see the it. savings in special that's education right. exactly because that's what we're using. I will tell you though, uh, in in doing this with the federal funds, I didn't see the quick use of those vans, but we already have. A homeless student that we're moving to we have two actually we have two going in two opposite directions and a young person who has a power chair and we got a power chair ramp for the back and we pick up the power chair and the young person and then we keep the power chair here until the end of that person's week and then the power chair and the young person go home in the van too but daily we pick that person up and, and bring them here yeah. to school so we've already used them because we have them so they're just not yeah. sitting there but that wasn't the point of getting them no. right Remember, we had to spend that money by a deadline. That's why we locked in, in in December on those vans. Right. So now, how come there isn't a line for repairs? Well, you've got a really good maintenance plan on these. That was one of the oh, questions. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Kim, got okay. the, Kim did all the shopping on this and did a wonderful job. Yeah. No, they each have, they all have the same maintenance plan. So, I mean, even an oil change? Yeah. Tire wow. rotation, okay. all that type of stuff. Yeah. Very good. Great. That was the only thing I saw okay. missing. But w you went from six to twelve thousand because you said let's be reasonable. Because yeah, yeah, I mean, the cost of fuel going up. Yes. You know, and I was like, and I just was like, I was being too conservative with thinking, oh, so many miles, and then I was like, the vans right now, they're we're filling them up every week. I'm like, okay, no, forget it. <laughs> we're gonna yeah, that's we're all. We're gonna need to <coughs> plus the, with the cost yeah. rising. Do all three VMs, yeah. so. And right now we're, we're, like Sharon and I, we're working quite heavily to determine how we could do the three vans transporting the students we have. So yeah. it's, it's going to be a challenge. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Nice. Also with transportation, Article 9. Yeah. And, and, and similar to transportation, um, nutrition is one of those things that's very much government run, right? There's only so much creativity you can get, and I think the best creative move that this district did years ago was hire a part-time nutrition director who serves us very well who what we share with Sanford again one of those shared services so Holly's still on board with us um, as you can see if you just go to the percentage increases there's really almost no change whatsoever in most of the categories but just to take them you know you're looking at substitutes um, and I, let me just speak to the substitutes for a minute because when you're in COVID times I didn't even consider this First time I had a cook who couldn't make it in for whatever reason, and I call Sanford, can I get somebody to replace, which is what we used to do. Well, no, we can't have Sanford people in the Acton buildings anymore. And I'm like, wow, I didn't oh even think of that. God. And then one of our one of our replacement, one of our subs who's been here for years is a little bit older and her husband's not doing so well. And she's like, geez, John, I'd really rather not. I'm like, oh boy, strike two. You know, what am I gonna do for these services? And custodians, right? Same thing. Yeah. A couple of the bus drivers that work for the bus company that we pay, they're not our employees. Yeah. We talked with them, and you know what? They're like, you know what? We get paid to drive the routes, but in between, we got some time off. So I got one that she loves to come in as a spare cook if we need her. She'll, <laughs> she comes in a little later because she's got to park the bus, hit the air brake, shut it off, secure it, clean it, come in. You're 15, 20 minutes later than normal. And she loves working in the kitchen if I need her. And then at night for a custodian, my high school driver is like, yeah, I'll, I'll give you a hand every now and then. Let me know if I need you. And he's been trained to clean the building. So if a custodian's either sick or wants a night off, I got, I got spares right within that bus 
within that group of bus drivers. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to guys let you guys know that they're, they're great people and they've worked out quite well for us. <laughs> what they do when cooking and custodian, there are employees. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> many hat wearers. That's what you need. Huh? Yeah, because right. they're like, with like, our kids anyway, right? So yeah. they're not. So it's all like one big family. So it worked out pretty good. And I've heard, I've heard too that it, it hasn't ended. It has actually that the superintendent has put on an apron and worked in a cafeteria. <laughs> yeah, I like it when I wear the hair net. That's always fun. <laughs> Glad I don't have David have a beard yet. Yeah. How are you? Yeah, yeah I just thought of that. <laughs> um, so support uh, substitutes benefits support benefits uh, minus one hundred seventy five dollars. Group insurance down three hundred thirty nine. Substitute benefits no change. Purchase professional services we went up five hundred fifty dollars. That's generally been the pattern each year for our professional services from Sanford. Uh, no change in repairs and maintenance. The next five items from software to the end. No change all the way, all the way down through for a difference of uh, $205 of the whole cost center. So pretty much almost exactly what it was. Okay, any questions on nutrition services? Because in a moment, I'm gonna give 100% of the next discussion over to Kim. <laughs> To make sure that it's said exactly right, because I realize <laughs> that if I just sit and listen to her, it's going to go better than if I talk. <laughs> now, are they able to eat the same food that they've always been eating all along? Yes, it's just that the way we're distributing the food and where they're eating it is different. That's an excellent question. Yes, we still have the hot trays, we still have a line, but the kids sanitize on their way in. They come in from the gym, okay? They come up over the stairs from the gym, three feet apart. We actually have little markers. And then they get in line, they, they don't punch in their own number. The person behind the counter knows how to do that. There's six feet distance between the food and the kid, children. Child gets a tray, whatever it is they ordered. Jim, custodian, takes care of the milk with gloves. He's the only one touching the milk. Off they go back to the classroom. Unless if kindergarten is able to be able to fit all the kindergarten kids at six feet apart with first grade, some of first grade, in the cafeteria. And we can get all of eighth grade in the cafeteria because they're all back five days a week now at six feet apart. Otherwise, everybody else goes back to the classroom. Everybody does this one-way traffic pattern too. Nobody's passing each other. But the actual meals and how they're prepared, really no different. Well, it's how they get it and where they consume it that's very different. Oh, well, that's good. good. Yeah. Probably it's a little bit easier for the staff too because they're not coming up with five different meals right they're coming up with so it's like monday monday's meal is on thursday tuesday's meal is on friday and then wednesday alternates every other week it's like if you look at the calendar for it it's actually it's like wow that's smart <laughs> and, and for greg and tina after the last child from the three through five cohort you know the last fifth grader comes through that place is a ghost town because they all eat in the classrooms takes about 10 minutes to feed mm. the three through five kids. They get in line, they do it. They're back in the classroom. They're being supervised down in the classroom. There's nobody in the cafeteria for that cohort. How do the trays come back? Uh, good question. We have trash barrels at each end of the building and carts. The kids know how to get rid of everything and distribute it into either recycling or trash. Goes on a cart, Greg and Tina come down, pick them up. Jim takes care of the trash. Everything comes back down here. Yeah, we did all this. Uh, like in August, we just figured it out. We're like, how are we going to do it? And we all got together and then we made some changes and figured some things out. And this is the way it's been for probably after the second week of school. That was normal. Good. Yeah. You know, all those nights I didn't sleep wondering no. how they were going to get their peanut butter and jelly. Okay. And it all worked out perfectly. <laughs> I, was I don't know why I want to eat. <laughs> I don't know. It, it does work out well. I would have said brown bag it, everybody. Just leave us alone. <laughs> There's, there, and that is an option, and some schools have done that. There are some. Everything's going to be wrapped in its own, and we found we didn't need to because if you're going to have a plastic fork, the plastic fork's on your tray. It's just your tray. Yeah. So for the, for the children, it's not that much different other than they're eating in the classroom. Yeah. Yeah. I bet they appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Hot meal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's not that much different than normal. Yeah. So okay, all set with nutrition, everybody? Well, you're done with that. Now, all right, then, we'll move on to revenues and All right, right. Kim's going to help us with revenues. Yep. So, I'm going to have you look at two sheets, too. In your packet, you also have a summary of your whole budget. Okay. 
So based on all the articles that we just did, our total expenditures come up to a five million five ninety three six sixty five, which is a decrease of thirty four thousand five hundred and thirty four from last year. Okay. So what was that that you were gonna thirty four what? It's $34,534 less than what we budgeted last year for expenditures. Okay? Yeah. yeah. She's got to look at this sheet. Yeah, yeah. It's the revenue sheet. Did you sheet. not get it? If you look at this, yeah, yeah this revenue this? makes it confusing. This right, because it's not parentheses. Oh, right. Yeah. This, this is, is revenue. This is why I, I kind of want you to look at this sheet at the same time. So, because this piece might just be a little bit. Um, I got one more. You want this back? Okay. So when we come up with the revenues, it's based on what we get from EPS subsidy. So we have a draft number already that we would be getting $356,694 from the state subsidy. And that's a decrease of $65,461 from last year. And a lot of that is just mainly because the number of kids that we have is, is down a little from last year. Um, I left the nutrition revenues the same. I'm trying to, you know, we, we tried to budget like a normal school year, okay? This year, there's no way we got 80,000 in revenues. No. We didn't spend that much in nutrition, okay? So, um, but we're going to budget as a normal year. Um, so the other, the other amount of money that is used um, to help offset taxes is the use of our undesignated funds and you'll see a big number in there so and the reason is like we were asked last week by <coughs> Roland you know is our undesignated fund balance 1.5 million yes as of June 30th yes it was okay we usually try to keep it at a certain level but last year was different okay we we had budgeted the 207,000 which was actually the kind of like the leftovers from the year before to help offset the budget okay but then our whole budget changed March 1st we're fully remote we're not doing sports we're not doing out of district trans we're not doing a lot of things so we did not spend that money so that money when it's not spent goes back into undesignated, okay? So the other piece too is we also got federal grant money. Now that's money that came in and we used a lot of that money to offset some of our supplies, okay? Yeah. So the combination of federal grant money coming in, the school being <laughs> closed to a pandemic, a lot of normal budget type stuff just didn't happen. So yes, our undesignated fund balance went up to 1.5 million. So we're, we're up, we're up about 300,000, way more than we should. So I knew that, but again, I was like, we're going to discuss revenues tonight. So that's what we're doing. So you see a use of 750,000. So that's a combination of what we didn't use from undesignated, what was left over from this year plus an amount that we know that we're not going to be using from the current budget, okay? There's going to be leftovers in this budget as well. We didn't have sports. We didn't have extracurricular activities. I think we've done one field trip. Yeah, it's, it's you know, tomorrow and Monday. Yeah, yeah. it's true. So, yeah. so there is so many things that we are not doing again this year. So it's a shot in the arm for the town and what that does is, okay, so if we use the use of 750000 from our unassigned fund balance, then the total, like we get it divided by local foundation. So when the EPS does it, you know how we have the two numbers? So the state says you have to have a minimum local amount. So that's your 3206 mm -hmm. That number come right off the EPS sheet. Okay? Mm -hmm. So then our local additional funds is, is to help supplement the difference of what we actually have our, for our total expenditures. 
what the bottom line is is the tax bill to the town next year will be five hundred and forty three thousand dollars less than what it is this year okay it's a shot in the arm it's a COVID <coughs> shot in the arm okay it's not something that will happen every year right and this is kind of why it's like this is this number has to be what it is to be reflective of what happened with the situation that we're in. So we didn't spend the money, we need to return it back, but we still want to budget for a normal school year. So that way we hopefully within a year or two, we're back on track. Yeah. So that way we just stay, our undesigned fund will just stay in a, a certain <coughs> level that it belongs. But we just, it, this is what we need to do to get it back into that right level. Does okay. That make sense? So basically, what you're saying is that we are going to return to the town to offset taxes on the school budget seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Correct. That's awesome. Okay, but well, my good. thing is when we go to the next year and the next year and the next year, right? And you see the seven fifty. Why can't we keep it at the two hundred thousand dollar level? Yeah. And then make a separate article saying the money we saved because we weren't in total operation is six hundred thousand or whatever, and yeah. so it's a separate thing that goes back to the town, and we keep our, you know, because it's gonna, you know, people are gonna be like, oh my god, it, it was down ten percent, and now when we go next year, the next year it's gonna be up, you know, fifteen percent because of that. Well, savings. A, it, I know. I'm wondering I, I, if I we could take it, it. out, I had the but, same but leave a placeholder of two fifty. Right. I think you can. And take five hundred thousand and throw it back to the town as savings for taxes. I understand where you're coming from. As a separate article. But in the town governments with town meetings, I believe any money you have left over has to go back to undesignated funds. Whereas city government, when you have an elected body of city councilors that represent your town, they can give you the authorization to carry it forward or not. But we're in a different situation where you you got need to, if you're not going to use it you need to give it back to the town. Right. It's very explainable if somebody would say why did you over budget so much? That's not what happened. No. Bottom line is as of yeah. March 17th last year the only thing we paid was salaries and insurance for people. That was it. We didn't have another expense because they were all working from home. Right. Yeah. And when that happens and things you're not paying for things that's where you end up. Right. And then I think Kim was key. The other one is we got federal funds we had to use by December, December 31st. Andy has enough hand sanitizer to clean the world for the next 10 years out in one of those containers. He's not taking it out of his local budget. So, this and you know what? The, the administration looks like there's going to be another shot in the arm with federal money. So, Mary, you're right on it. So, you get this federal money to offset your local and you can do these things. But once the smoke clears in a few years and it's back on the local, what's it going to look like? It's always smart to plan for a regular year to not plan on that extra money. If the extra money comes and we use it to offset, we use it to offset. When we built this budget for the year we're living in, we didn't know what COVID-19 was. Think, we had no idea. I think on, on our side of it, um, you know, the rest of the town looking at it would probably understand that. And obviously, I see your point there. In a couple, three years, COVID's all over, and then all of a sudden the budget looks, looks back. Right. Because, yeah. you know, where's our 750000 coming back from the school? And I think most people would understand that there was circumstances behind that. Yeah. But right now, what we're doing, you know, we're we're obviously in budget season. We're crunching numbers right now. <laughs> we, we're making some cuts. This and that. Anything that you guys can do for us would be great. Well, then it sounds like the timing's but, perfect for the town. And the other thing is that you know we have to keep our undesignated fund at also a at a certain level. Right. According to state law, we've Correct. got guidelines that we have to go by. Fifty-page right? policy. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> that is correct. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think so it just looks good overall. I, I, I mean, think it's great to be able to. I think it's great to be able to, especially this year where people have been going through a lot of hardships to yeah. be able to offset taxes with a little boost of money from what we usually can do. Yeah, we, we're going to call it our COVID vaccine shock. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 one, one thing we're having a problem right now is with with the budgets that came in on us. It was a huge jump. You know, we're talking, um, I think right now we're at about a 53 cent increase per thousand if we took everything that came in. So, you know, with the cuts that we're making and trying to still get everybody, you know, what they need, 
you know, we're looking at it like we're still in COVID. Yeah. You go and raise somebody's taxes right now, it just wouldn't look good on anybody's part. Yeah. And, um, and of course, you know, we've, this is, I think, the first time we've had three foreclosures in one year, mm -hmm. you know, and so we're looking at all those variables right now. So, you know, this would be a big boost for us. But this will all be on record anyway. Every, right. You know, oh, yeah. Yeah. everything is going to be in writing. Oh, sure. yeah. And, and but, you know, some people say, well, how much are we saving? Because, you know, the school was closed March through June. How much did we save? And, you know, well, I would like to say, oh, right here, that's what we said. That's save. right. Mm, point it out. Yeah. Well, uh, it's recorded. Well, the other thing is, so we didn't use transportation at all from March to June of last year. So even though we had a contract with the no, transportation, no, no. so we did transportation. I was talking about was was our contract of transportation, right? Because the kids didn't go to out of district transportation; they didn't go to school. Yeah, so but what happened with the regular transportation? We used it? them in other ways. We used some of the personnel in the building to help Andy. We had some deliver meals. We were as creative as we could with our regular bus fleet staff. Is that your yeah. question? Yeah, yeah. because yes. you know, we, we they, do 177 they, days. We away. honored their. We honored the end of their. The answer to your question. We honored the end of their contract through July one. Right. They got what we owed their company, just like we did with the. Um, people that offered OT and PT by Zoom, which is way different than being able to work with a kid. Yeah. So we honored our contracts. That was part of what we decided to do. But we also asked the people that were contracted agents to give something back and be creative and how can you help us? And that's when we started using the buses to deliver laptops right. and things like that. Those people were at my disposal at that point. And was it full-time work? No. But was it something? <laughs> Absolutely. And it was the well, right thing to do last spring. And they so. did all our transportation. I know they covered all our transportation for the summer. With uh, that's correct. That's right. Yeah. We did summer school without yeah, a transportation bill. That's right. Which is another year. That's this budget year, actually. Right. I'd forgotten about that. But that's the answer to that. I get where you're coming from because Kim's talking about out of district placement when we have a transportation to at Saco for a particular kid, right? That didn't happen because they weren't going to Saco, so that was a cost savings. But our basic rate for the contract for buses was still paid, but we asked for something back in the way of cleaning and distribution of materials and lunches and things like that and we got it from them i mean it was a contract yeah and it was a <laughs> and it was summertime too where they actually said you know your summer school transportation remember we were only one of two schools in new york county and maybe all of southern maine that ran a summer school last year it was kittery <laughs> and us everybody else was closed until like two weeks before school opened and we used the summer to be boot camp for how to open and learn how to do it. And boy, having the buses able to move the kids and learn how to do that. No, the contract made day one could go. be null and void because we weren't doing the, the runs to the high school. We weren't using them as contracted. I, but that's you know what a I'm little different. I, I know quite a bit about contracts. I've got, I've got a bunch of them. And you know, I've got a, I got a contract with the city of Sanford for plowing the roads. When I signed that contract, the reason my number is what it is is because I have to be prepared for it. I have to have all the, you know, and like these school buses, the school buses are going to be lined up, and then all of a sudden when they say, okay, you're allowed to go back to school, they have to be ready for that. So there's a lot of funding behind that, and they have to cover. And it's like me in Sanford, you know, I, I give a, a price for plowing their roads. If it don't snow, I still get paid, but I still have equipment and stuff ready to do the job. So that's why you sign a contract. I don't believe that you could get out of that contract because of this, because they've got a financial interest into it. So they would have a hardship. That's the reason why that you know their insurance the other goes thing on. Too is it, okay, because Biddeford is part of the public school system, and, and we had to follow what the governor was saying. So they also paid for every bus driver for their standard hours, just like we did our teachers, our ed techs, and everybody else. And on the a flip side of it too is there's other ways of looking at it you know and what you guys did was great I mean, if you were able to get and utilize those guys and that's using your head you know, i like that but another thing you've got to look at too is they're going to make up that difference in cost somewhere if they lost that you know they don't get paid that contract the next time they renew that contract you're going to get hit with that so by keeping them on like you guys did probably saved you in the long run because they're going to make the revenues up somewhere they're going to pay for those buses and, and we really were we really were fortunate to get this this particular contract with this bus company 
Um, well, you've done well by them. You know, we've we've done well by them, and they've done well by us. And yeah. we've got all branded buses and a good relationship with the driving crew. And yeah. you know, it's right. definitely still have their bus payments. So. <laughs> yeah. well, there's, 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 a, there's another key point. If you remember, I it's so clear in my head. I can almost remember the time of day I talk to people about things because this I hope will never happen again. <laughs> So I remember conversations with Judy, like, and as a parent, you got a letter that said, we're closing till this date. Yeah. And I said, with the hope that we can open after this date, because I, I have no idea what's going on. Some schools said, we're done for the rest of the year. Like, they called off school in early May. I'm like, we're not, we're holding out. I'm hoping to get them either. I was willing to hold out for the last two weeks of June. You were the most optimistic. <laughs> I'll bring them in on the phone. Well, I was. No, we are not. I remember I you no said problem. you went to Finally, a superintendent's Zoom meeting, and they're all like, we're done. And you're like, what? No, 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 no. Not over until it's over. I can't remember the well. ball. Zoom in from the Bahamas. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, but seriously, and the mentality of it is we're not done. We're just moving the date out. You don't put your buses on ice. You, you might need them in two weeks. So everybody was still waiting to hear, are we still open or not? The answer is no. want to work too. You know, those people yeah. in those buses still want to drive. Right. So. In hindsight, we kicked the can down the road until summertime and then opened summer school. But I tell you, Back in April, I wasn't convinced that we were not reopening. I was pretty convinced we were going to, if anybody could reopen, it was going to be Acton Elementary School. Yeah. I, was pretty, I was a pretty convinced guy. But I wasn't going to be the only one in York County because then we would have been the COVID school. So oh, it was yeah. like, we're not, we can't do it. We just can't do it. Yeah. But now in hindsight, we wouldn't have. We didn't have it. <laughs> no, we wouldn't have been the COVID yeah, school. Yeah. It's always good to be an armchair quarterback, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, we, had, we were able to have graduation. That was a big plus. That was awesome. I mean, that was great to be able to bring yeah. the kids back and have the eighth grade graduation. Yeah, yeah. outside in their cars outside. and then home instead of the class. Yeah. Yeah. Drive-in graduation worked out just, it was great. It was yeah. really nice. It was, it was impressive the way it was done. Um, here in Acton, we it. think outside the box. That's the way it is here. Outside the label. <laughs> The, the graduation in Sanford there, my boy graduated yeah, high school yeah. last year, and that was it was interesting. Standing out in the parking lot doing, you know, doing the uh, anthem and all that, then yeah. getting in line and driving and dumping the kid out the back door, <laughs> and driving up and trying to take pictures. Yeah. And it was interesting, but yeah. it was at least they had something. Something. Yeah. Because yeah, I was really worried that they weren't going to have that. Yeah, and uh, I was just grateful that he was able to get some football season and everything before it happened because uh, he would have been devastated if he were yeah. to play his last year in football. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is that it? What do you think? Good. That's it. Yeah. Well, a week from tonight, you'll be voting on. We'll prepare the articles. They'll be read. You'll do a vote on each article to get us to that number. And a week, easily by a week from now, probably with Jennifer and I'll have wrap up the conversation after I hear from Drummond and Woodson as to what yeah. the article language will be. She really needs to know, know what the language is going to look like. Right. And we can discuss that too if you want next week. I have a very light agenda for next week. We're going to have STEAM, our new uh, well, our new special, right? And we're going to have Sally come in and talk about that. She um, did an overview with the staff with me on Wednesday, just yesterday. So we're going to take, that was kind of our trial balloon for you guys. And we're going to do that on Thursday night. There, Andy's piece on heating and ventilation, I'm going to move out to April because we have a lot to do because we're still hoping you're not, you can't be on Warren Finance, you're a selectman. I'm still, I'm oh, still no. hoping, no, 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 because no, Dennis was here last week and I was still hoping that the plan, now we'll have to work with Warren Finance is a week from tonight, uh, yeah. Yeah. you do the budget <laughs> and you've done your piece as a school committee and we turn it over to Warren Finance and then we're done. We're a week ahead of time. That's, again, our hope because that's how it used to happen. So that's the plan. We'll see how it goes. I haven't asked. I haven't talked to the chair of Warren Finance, but I will, and that's still where I'm planning on going with with your blessing for next week. I just got an email from him. Oh, you did. Yeah. Anything that we need to know tonight? No, he just said he wanted a draft warrant so they could review it before next week's meeting. So well, one I'll, one do might. I'll do it. I'll do it. Get it out tonight. Well, you're not going to even have the 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 vote of the school committee until after five o'clock a week from tonight meaning but they'll have the draft so we can have the draft they'll have the draft, they'll yeah. have the draft. we'll have we can have that tomorrow yeah, they'll have yeah. The, they'll have the of the draft. of the 18 19 articles yeah the language right. that might go on a ballot that's still a few that's weeks out but i'll have most of the ideas of what that'll look like so you just want the 18 and 19 articles right that's so easy because yeah. they're going to vote on those articles anyway they're going to vote on those absolutely articles. and then so yeah i will get that well, you would normally have the budget packet out to the school committee by Monday at noon, right? Because it's a Thursday meeting. 
want to just use that as a timeline for everybody Monday at noon okay yeah because we got to get everything to you anyway we might as well Sunday do you want to huh? on Sunday? Yes, Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Great. That's, that's okay. So you guys are going to be voting on this this budget next? A week from there tonight at 5 o'clock. Okay. Yes. Okay. We're going to have a regular school committee that's meeting with one good. program I want the school committee to take a look at. After that, and a few just housekeeping orders, it's right into the each warrant needs to be voted on and approved by the school committee. Then we'll kind of conclude, and our hope is then warrant finance would do their review and make recommendations on what the school committee just did. At least that's the plan tonight. It doesn't always work out the way we hope, but that's. I'm new to this whole process here, so yeah, okay. I'm trying to. Yo, no, I, I speed here, and I, yeah. I want to. I want to make sure that when I report back to the other two yeah. selectmen there, that uh, you know, I get my facts right. Perfect. And, uh, um, so, as of right now, we're looking at a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar kickback. That uh, $750,000 use of to offset the taxes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So basically for you, yeah, but it comes to you 540 or yeah. the difference. So with the net budget of what it was this year, that's yeah. what goes total mm -hmm. So we're asking yeah. this yeah. instead. So it's just the $504,000. Everybody's wondering what I <laughs> Yeah. So it's really five hundred and twelve thousand dollars, not seven hundred thousand dollars. For Dave, when Dave's talking about tax relief, it's five hundred thousand dollars. Five hundred yes. right, right, right. right. That's why I said Yeah, yeah, not seven. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we're gonna have forty three thousand Because we'll use two fifty to close the gap. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now I next we won't get into depth with that without no, but it's a good sure message. Yeah. But um well, they can go, you know, they can always come back and look at our uh, look at our YouTube of our meeting yep. to if they have any you know, they can zip, zip ahead to Kim's section of it. They don't want to be bored with all the rest of it. <coughs> and next week, when we meet and okay the articles, yep. the Warren Finance Committee will be here too, right? Hopefully. That's the plan. Yeah. Hopefully. Just yeah. checking. That, uh, that's what I just mentioned to Dave. The I know. plan this year is to do what historically used to do mm -hmm. and, and get it all done in one night. Right because we're right on schedule, we're actually ahead of schedule, and that'd be great, especially since we've got new work to do to figure out how to get this to the ballot. This is kind of new territory for the school committee and the school. Mm -hmm. It'd be great to get it all done next week because we've been working on this since November. So, so yeah, I guess probably the last question yeah. I've got is, if we go on the ballot like you want to do, mm -hmm. how many articles we vote, you, we'd be voting on? Just one? I'm thinking it might just be one, the bottom line, but yeah. I don't want to say that for sure. Tomorrow's meeting and tomorrow's information that I'm getting that I'll share with Jennifer as soon as I get it yeah. will be telling. No, it might be like one or two, but it won't. If we say we have 19, have um, 18 articles, the there won't be 18 questions. It'll be yeah. less than that. It yeah. should be one big one with like maybe a couple of time. ancillary I ones, but I, I need to wait and hear from you tomorrow. So the main operating budget would probably be you got it the meat and potatoes of it right yeah it would make more sense doing that so that right. if one failed you know, you kind of that's exactly right and you know if what's the what's the big difference between like k3 education regular teaching and three through five regular teaching it's all regular teaching right but we have to break them out yeah right right okay we just need the authority to do it and the governor's allowed us to do it this year so why not yeah yeah it might be a time to do it yeah I see. Yeah. <coughs> I know. I know. So hopefully the Warren Finance Committee have been following along. They've been getting the uh, stuff by mail, right by email. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They've mm -hmm. been sending it along, and hopefully they'll be here next next week to join us. That would be good. And uh, hopefully we'll have a chance to, uh, if they have any questions, to answer them before we vote on our articles. We can do that as well. Yep. yep. All right. Is there any other old business? No. If not, then I will look for a motion to adjourn our meeting. I'll make a motion to adjourn at 6.04 p.m. Wow. I'll second that. <laughs> All in favor? Five and all. Thanks, Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks, Thanks for coming.